Hi, I'm Maisie and this is CCN's Weekly News 5 at 5 November 5th. The Central Coast is once again shaping up as a federal election battleground with Federal Environment Minister Susan Lay and Opposition Leader Anthony Albanese both visiting the area this week. Albanese, along with Labour candidate for Robertson, Dr Gordon Reid, descended on a vote today to further commit to cancelling the PEP 11 oil and gas licence that's still active off the Central Coast. Local surfers and community members gathered in numbers to hear what he had to say. We have a unique and beautiful ecosystem and a unique and beautiful environment here and we do not want that to be compromised or destroyed. So we do not want this PEP 11, PEP 11 project to go ahead. We, we will stop PEP 11 going ahead. Full stop, exclamation mark, no question, not, a, not, a, not equivocal, no ifs, no buts. And Federal Environment Minister Susan Lay presented the Australian Reptile Park this week a grant for their conservation area that has been built to house bushfire affected wildlife. Our reporter Sky Hull was there with more details. Rescue rehab for endangered turtles and frogs nestled at the back of the Australian Reptile Park at Summersby now officially open. <laughs> Wildlife organisation Aussie Ark and the Reptile Park have teamed up again to support bushfire affected wildlife thanks to $850,000 from the federal government. Frogs, no matter who they are or where they are, are susceptible to something called chytrid fungus and it's even more important than ever that we have these facilities to captive breed our wildlife. And COVID numbers on the coast have continued their single digit trend as our local tracking graph shows and uh, local vaccination rates are climbing towards 90%. From last Monday, Coasties were allowed to travel to regional New South Wales and judging by these northbound traffic images taken by livetraffic.com along the M1, many are using the easing of restrictions to get out on the road. And the complex council's finances remain in focus. Let's go to Dave with an update. Thanks, Maisie. Months after finalising redundancy package for hundreds of workers, Central Coast Council is planning to increase its workforce in the water, sewer and drainage department by dozens of so-called full-time equivalent positions. It appears from detailed financial documents CCN's uh, seen, Council is proposing to increase staff in water and sewer by around 72. Remembering 58 employees in that department recently took voluntary redundancy, much of which was financed by bank loans. CCN has asked the Council to confirm that the increase in new full-time positions is correct and is awaiting an answer. Uh, the water and sewage operation is still running at a significant deficit but is counting on a 34% weight water rate increase uh, approved by IPART to bolster its income. Here is a little of what Council's Chief Financial Officer Natalie Cowdery had to say during this week's Council meeting. Thus far, um, since the beginning of the financial crisis for Council, um, the de deficit position in the Water Fund and Drainage Fund um, is consistent to the prior month uh, of about $47.6 million um, being in deficits, um, but we have been able to uh, bring the general fund unrestricted funds to $28 million, as I explained last month. Um, this is a fluctuation. And the A-League season is closing in and the Mariners have yet to pen an agreement with Central Coast Stadium. The reason being that the council has yet to announce the management contract for the stadium. As a result, the first four Mariners games are played away, with the first home game against Sydney FC due to be played on December 12. Where? Well, we all hope it'll be at our local stadium. Stay tuned on that front. An international cricketing legend, Alan Davidson, passed away this week, just shy of a tonne, at the ripe age of 92. Davidson was born and bred in Lissero, where he famously honed his skills using an orange as a ball on his homemade pitch. See this weekend's paper for his full obituary. Thanks, Dave. All of these stories and thousands more can be found on our website without a paywall or in this week's Coast Community News, Coast Community Chronicle and the Pelican Post. Remember to subscribe to all of our YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Spotify and Instagram pages for updates throughout the week and keep an eye out for Skyhill's video updates. To leave you this week, take a look at next week's Amped Culture interview with broadcaster and mathematician Adam Spencer. 
We hope you have a fun and safe weekend and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Jump across to the maths. Yes. You speak about maths being beautiful. Yes, How it is. How is that so when so many people's experiences have been different, including myself? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of... Just because people's experiences of something aren't all that, um, you know, enjoyable, doesn't mean that if that in, inside that thing there's not an inherent beauty... You know, I'm, I've, I've got better over the last few years, but up until a little while ago, people's experiences of my cooking could be enough to put them off cooking, but well-cooked food is beautiful. Uh, and so if unfortunately you weren't taught mathematics all that well or just didn't get the bug yourself, mm. that doesn't detract from the fact that if taught properly or if understood, mm. uh, even in a superficial way, maths is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I, Would... I, I can't think of anything inherently more does it give you your meaning to the world uh it gives it, it yeah both both shapes the way i see the world and uh yes does give yeah meaning to the world